We're going to do a proof for 4.4, example 4. I, yeah, I know it's your favorite. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. Um, we need to use our logic to prove that triangle EGF is congruent to triangle HFG. They've given us some given information, and we really need to try and construct a proof using statements and reasons and, and use our logic to come up with a reason. Now remember what section we're in. What did we just learn? We just learned about side, side, side and side, angle, side. Okay? So one of those is going to come into play here. Now if you study the figure just a little bit, let me kind of get up here. They've already marked for you. This is given. Okay? We know that EG is congruent to FH, okay? So I'm going to mark these sides right here, kind of darken them just a little bit so you can kind of see it, okay? Now, the triangles share this side right here. Now that's interesting because if they share a side, then the length of that side is the same in both triangles. So if they share a side, it's the same side, and a side is equal to itself because of reflexive, okay? So I can prove that FG is congruent to GF using the reflexive property. Now, my problem is I don't know how to grab that third side and make it congruent. I, there's just, I can't think of a way to do it. But if we look at the given information, the parallel lines, we learn some things about angles of these parallel lines. And so remember, we talked about angles that are in between the two lines. And we talked about alternate interior angles and same side interior. We're not going to do same side interior. That just doesn't make any sense. But we could focus on these two alternate interior angles and, and use side angle side. So what I like to do is exactly what I just did with you, kind of map out ahead of time, what do I know, what can I figure out easily, and then what is going to end up being my proving point, how can I prove it. And then I'll be able to lay this whole thing out pretty easily, I think, once I establish a direction that I want to take. So let's do statements, and then we'll do reasons right here, okay? And I always, I really like starting with um, the given. Now, because we're pretty sure that we want to use side angle side, then let's start with the one side that we do know that's given, and that's EG is congruent to HF. We know that because that was given originally. Okay? Now, I don't really mind um, the direction you go from here, if you want to go in order as it states, side, and then talk about the angle and then grab your other side, you can do that. I don't really think it matters, but if it, if it matters to you, then let's go after the angle. The angle, then, we will establish that. We first need to establish that the lines are parallel, and so that's also given, okay? Now, the reason why we need to know that and why that's pivotal information is because then we can focus in on um, naming these angles. We can say angle EGF has to be congruent to angle HFG, and the reasoning would be that they are alternate interior angles. And that's a theorem that we know is true. That if you have parallel lines, then the alternate interior angles are congruent and therefore equal in measure. So now we've got, here's our side, okay? Here's our angle. So then the very last, next to last step is we've got to prove that that other side is congruent 
and we can very easily um, prove that. So we can say, well, segment GF is has to be congruent to segment FG because of the reflexive property. Okay, and so we've talked about that before. Um, that an, a line or a segment is going to be congruent to itself. We've already talked about that. So here's the other side. So there's your side angle side. Once you've established those three things and you've proven them, then you're ready to finish the problem. And you go, okay, so now we know that triangle EGF must be congruent to triangle HFG. And our reasoning side angle side and in some books they write down the steps where they prove them and they'll, they'll write steps one three and four to show each part of the side angle side just like that okay what do you think is it getting a little easier i hope these proofs aren't vexing i i just am trying to be very logical with you and point out these things to you but um, that's a, a nice logical progression in the order of the theorem, which is also a really nice thing to do. So um, I'll leave it to you uh, for any questions. Write them down. If you need more practice, write more practice across the top to remind you to tell me that tomorrow. All right. We'll see you tomorrow.